I think I first of all see a man that's really interested in glamour. I've always thought that that, that is a big part of, of Andy Warhol. It has a very high similarity to fashion, I think. High um, quality of examining the, uh, the subject that he's looking at. I, I really do like the, 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 the whole sort of way that he's, he's using the pen. I think, I think it has a very sort of lively, it's almost like Egon Schiele. It has some kind of similarities to, the, uh, to him, I think. I always think that talking about fashion and art in the same breath is very dangerous because I think fashion is so much more about capturing a moment and it's about capturing um, something that, that will pass within six months or within three months and then you're on to the next thing that, that, that has to become fashionable, that has to become some, some kind of newsworthy. You know, it, they keep on inventing things at the moment so, so, so it keeps you on your guard of what it is. But talking about Warhol, when you look at his drawings and when you look at his you know, pre later work and so forth, certainly there is some kind of fashion elements in there because it is very much about capturing a moment as well without saying anything too deep about the world. But then, you know, looking at it in the backlight, it, it obviously has that kind of reflection onto the world. You know, you can see a lot of what what the 50s was about, what the 60s was about when you look at his work. And I think looking at Warhol's life drawings, for instance, you can, you can see that he's probably been sitting in the back of the room and just been doing these drawings without trying to think, oh, this is, you know, I'm doing something that is something. Or so. I don't know. I think that that is when you get the best result. When you're not trying to do anything to please or when you're not trying to do anything that sort of, um, I know it from myself, I, I very much like to be in the corner of the room observing what all the other people are doing because I think that, that is when you, you discover the most interesting thing. And, and, and I also think that, that it, true to form with, with, with the best designers or the best artists, the best, it, they never are the center of the attention. Well, he's not great, is he? But he's, he, but he's, he's, he. I think that he's really brilliant and really, really great in capturing what, it, what, what the whole, what it was that he was trying to capture. I, you know, I really love his shoe drawings because I, I do feel like, as a fashion designer, that I can capture all the details that I need to know about the shoes from that period. For me, the, the fascination about glamour and, and, and when you actually, if you are if you are at a party or some place and you see this most beautiful girl or, or beautiful boy that that comes in, you know, that just some people just have that some kind of capacity of capturing the room without being vulgar, without being anything but the part of what it is that they are when they come into this room. I think that that is the fascination because you get the whole package and you get, you look at this person and you think, well, they're happy. They have a really good life. Everybody loves them. Everybody thinks that they're beautiful and everybody wants to be them. I don't think that you can ask for much more than that. And I think that that is a high part of glamour. But then on the other hand, I think that also, you know, if you talk about Randy Warhol, she was probably really, lonely and probably just wanted to be with someone and, and, and try to have that kind of happiness and love within his life. But I, I always think that maybe that sounds a bit pathetic that when you talk about people like that, but I think that there is some truth to that. But, but there's, that's those two elements that you can never ever make work in harmony, I think. You know, I, 
I know a lot of people who, who feel like that within the fashion world or within the world of art. You know, that's always the complicated element of being who you are. Having seen these drawings in, in how they're being hanged here and how they're being exhibited here, I'm very drawn to this. It, it really sort of says something to me as a person, much more so than, than, than his, his uh, silkscreen painting does, I have to say. And maybe that is because that you've become so familiar with that. You've become so familiar with the Marilyn Monroe or the the, the soup can or, or the Elvis Presley or whatever it is, you know, you, you, it's just so much in your head that that is him. And so seeing this, it almost seems like that is a new, it's a new art, you know, it's a new person, that it's a new, you know, you didn't, if you, if, it's almost like he, you wouldn't think that he would be dead. It would be a new person that is exhibiting his work for the first time, almost, you know, but it, obviously it has some kind of, you know, you can tell that it's from the 50s, 60s, and, and so forth. Um, but, but, but I'm very drawn to this, and I, I will say that I, th I think that I'm much more drawn to this than I am to his later work, yes. I, I think so, absolutely. And um, I, I, I don't, I, I, think, I think that I view the world very childish, I have to say, some, in some to, it's to some extent. I have a very hard time sometimes being a grown-up in that world. Because it sometimes makes you very sad that you have to look at the world like that, I think. I think that that, that, that is the link between him and I. I think that we're both very childish and naive. You killed your yeah. European son. You spit on those under 21. But now your blue cars are gone. You better sit so long.